Welcome back to this episode of Iron Hands Engineering. Uh, today, what we're going to be doing is a couple of medley of little things, really. We've got to roll the arches, we've got to fit a new head unit, we've got to give the van a clean and a polish, uh, we've got to fit... Yeah, I said the new head unit, didn't I? Yeah, there you go. We've got a couple of other bits and pieces, but I cannot actually remember what they are. But anyway, I've been driving this now for about a week since it's been lowered on the coilovers and with the new wheels on. And well, it only is this a high, when you hit a big bump, it does scrub. So we have got this bad boy out of storage. So we're going to jack up each side and roll the arches. So I'm going to be showing you all how to do that. Uh, I don't think there's a way you can really do it without cracking or possibly damaging the paint on the arches, but the paintwork's not the greatest anyway, so we're just going to roll it. If it is really bad, then we'll respray the whole wing at some point. If not, then we've got away with it. But let's see how that one goes, shall we? So what we've got to start off with is we've got to jack the car up. So we've got the jack ready on the uh, the jack, jack and point. We've got an axle stand to go underneath it, but I don't think we're going to need it. We're going to put it underneath anyway, just to be safe and for the purposes of this video, because health and safety, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, then what we need to do is we take the arch roller. We bolt the arch roller onto the hub. Then we've got to heat up all of that just to a regular heat gun. And then we can start rolling back and forth with the roller until it starts flaring out a little bit. Now, unfortunately on this arch, as you can probably see here, there is some rusty bubbles. So we're gonna heat it up as best we can anyway, and then just see what we're left with in the end. But we might need to take the inner arches out. I'm not entirely sure, because I cannot remember how the inner arches are structured on this, whether or not they actually touch the lip or they'll obstruct the wheel. I do not know, I do not know. But let's begin, shall we? Right, so the wheel's now off. Everything in there still seems done up, which is good. But basically, we have got one, I'm not sure if you can see that there. Come on. We've got one T30, I'd imagine, bolt in there, holding this inner arch on the piece that needs to be rolled. So, we'll get that out of there, and then we'll start, and then we'll start rolling. Right, so we have just discovered our first problem. I use this arch roller many times on all my Japanese cars and this never occurred to me. The stud is too big to go through any of the holes. So, uh, we're gonna have to take the arch roller to work and we're gonna have to drill out at least three of these holes to be able to use it on this. So that's kind of called an end to today on the arch rolling. So we better get, in, get on installing the head unit, because if not, I've wasted a fucking day. Right, so we took the arch roller to work and uh, we, uh, we opened up these two holes and this hole here. So these three holes we opened up big enough to be able to get the um, the studs through. So we're now just going to jack that back up, start heating this up, and then start setting the arch roller up to get that all rolled.
Now as you can see, the arch roll is pretty much set up. All this arm kind of thing is adjustable, right? So you adjust it to where you want it to, where, not, where you want the wheel to extend to to make contact with the arch. And the same with this head, you pivot up until it makes contact with the arch. Right, we've got it all bolted on to the hub here, and the idea is you turn this handle, and what this handle will do is it will push the arm even more so into the arch. Right? And then all you've got to do is you grab hold of it and you go backwards and forwards. Now I'm not doing this with one hand because sometimes it takes a fair bit of fucking grunt to be able to do it, but you just keep doing that until you're happy with the flare that you've got. Obviously, what you're trying to eliminate is the lip that is above the arch, you want that tucked in. But you get, as so long as you heat this up quite well, you can actually flare this out really nicely. Just don't, when you're moving the wheel, stop like in the middle because you're tired. Because this wheel will then press on that piece and possibly make like an indentation. So you've got like a, a ridge in your arch. You need it to be like a fluid motion. And when you're stopped, you want to be like somewhere down the bottom kind of thing. You just want to keep doing that and then crank the handle once and just keep going and going and going until you get the desired flare that you want. So this is what we're left with, basically. It's not pretty, but it has flared the arch out quite a bit, which is what I wanted for the clearance of it anyway. Now, I said at the start of the video, I reckon it was gonna flake anyway because of the bubbles and stuff that was appearing on the arch, and it has. So basically what I now need to do is I'm just gonna go round it with the, uh, with a copper mallet and the panel, uh, panel mallet. I'm just going to form it up a little bit better, all right, just so it's a little bit more contoured. And then I've got a touch-up paint, so I'm just going to touch it up with a little touch-up paint just for now. But as I've said to you in earlier videos, I do also need to repaint the sills because they're starting to go in places where like you've stepped in there and the white's starting to show through. So when I repaint the sills, I will be repainting their marches as well. It's a good job this van ain't pristine or else I reckon some of you would have cried. But this is the end result basically. So like I said, it's not pretty, it flaked the paint. So we used the touch up paint just to get rid of it so it looks all right from, from a distance. And well, like I said, when I come back and paint the sills, I'll paint the arches as well. I'll get that all sanded down and get that done quite nicely. But as you can see from the side profile, it's sticking the arch out quite a bit further. All right, so that's now gonna allow me to drop it that extra, I don't know, 20, 30 mil that I wanted to do with the top mount, with the top mount mods and the hub mods, as compared to the standard side. You can see like how flat that is. It's basically perfectly in line with the side wall of the tire. So when you go drop it down a massive bump, that's gonna go up in there and scrub it. Whereas this one now, while it might not be pretty, it's functional. So, we have now got to do, we've got three more corners to do really, but we need to do the rears now. So we're gonna do the rear on this side. But like I said, this one's not crispy, this one's not rusty. So hopefully the paint stands up a lot better. You can see obviously where it's rubbed through there where someone's 
hit something. But yeah, if we can get that one done as well, and then we'll do the other two sides. Let's crack on. This is what we've got after we've rolled the rears. So as you can see, it's flared it out quite nicely compared to the flat profile that I had before. But what we've got to do is we obviously just got to try and go around it with a mallet just and try and like even up some of the bits. Because obviously this is where the, it was applying pressure to start with. And then as it loses its kind of tension over here, it kind of falls back in. The same here. Here, I couldn't get it no further than here because the lock nut on the back of the um, arch roller here was hitting on the carrier of the caliper. So I think the only way to get it any further than that when you're rolling it is to take the caliper off. But what I'm just gonna do is I'm just gonna uh, form it with a mallet just a little bit more and uh, see where we go like that. But as you can see, not a lot of the paint is chipped off. And I think that's just because as well, that wasn't as corroded as the, um, as the front. So we're just going to form it up a little bit uh, and then that's it for this this bit and we'll come back and we'll paint this the same when we paint the front arch and the sills. Right, so this side is pretty much done now. We managed to turn the flare in quite a bit more with the mallet. So um, it's a lot more, uh, oh, it flows a lot more. I've just forgotten what the, what the word is for it. Uh, it's a lot more consistent. So the flare is a lot more consistent with the arch. So this is what we started off with basically. So it was all, it was all flat really, it's really flat. So you've got about like, I don't know, maybe an inch here, 20 mil to an inch um, of flat on your arch. And what you've done with the roller is you've just made it come out, basically. You've just bent it out. So this will allow me to drop the rear a lot more, allow me to carry more stuff without it scrubbing um, or be tucked in there and all that and wouldn't hit on nothing, luckily. Um, we did also as well do the door test because it only occurred to me after I'd rolled it that um, the door might not be able to open. So if you open the door like this, I'm not sure how well you can see it down there, but it just about misses the arch. So, yeah, I'd call that a success. So we now just got to get on and do the other side. Eventually. So I was in the middle of rolling the other rear arch and um, this happened. The, uh, oh, the big rusty bubbly flaky bit that was on there gave up the ghost and decided it didn't want to stay on the, on the van no more. So <laughs> as well as obviously doing the sills, because this was the main culprit of repainting the sills. Um, as you can see, that's like wear mark on there where lads have gone in and out of the van over however many years and that's just rubbed itself through. So it looks like what we're going to be painting is the arches, the sills, and then grinding down and treating that bit of rust and painting that as well. But unfortunately for the time being, all we've got is this. So we're going to smear the living crap out of that just so it looks good from a distance. 
don't you just love rusty old vehicles? One hour later. So that's all four arches now rolled and done, basically. They ain't pretty and they never will be. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't really expect as much corrosion on the front as I did. Uh, and from what I can see on that, uh, some of the metal has actually split where the corrosion is. Um, it's not the end of the world to me, if I'm perfectly honest with you. Like I said, I'm going to be coming back and painting the sills, the arches, um, any little bit that needs doing to it as well. Um, that rust patch on the back, uh, that gave up the ghost finally when I was given um, a bit nearer, a couple of love taps with a hammer. Um, so it's all that bit there, as you can see. So I just touched that up and all that just so it looks good from the distance. But basically we wanted this to be so that we wouldn't scrub when we started sticking stuff in the back of it. We've got go-karts, we've got motorbikes, we've got stuff like that what's gonna go in the back. I don't want it to scrub, that's gonna drive me nuts. And I ain't paying for 20 inch tires to be replaced every couple of months. So we got it all rolled, everything sorted. So. That's basically it for this episode of um, Iron's Talon, Iron Talon's Engineering, guys. So, um, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And uh, I guess we'll see you again on the next one. Cheers, guys.